Good early morning, YouTube. -y. It's a new day. <laughs> I got a few things accomplished yesterday. And just some strange shit. I got a hold of a guy to help me drop trees in the yard. I explained to them I had another tree outfit that was going to help me. Then they said they couldn't. And I explained to the dude my feud in the neighborhood. And if working with me, if that bothers you because of what I got going on, I'm going to be up right up front, Holmes. I don't want you drug into my bullshit if, if, if there's small town drama. And he said, I don't care about none of that. Cool. So he's going to give me a call. He's a little busy. And in a couple of days, I get somebody in the yard to drop trees. I can't wait to see that. That's going to be cool. I don't have the skills. I'm going to learn. I'm going to watch what he does and learn. But there's no replacement for experience when it comes to dropping trees. And that's some dangerous shit. Now, if I'm way out in the South 40 and I don't give a fuck which way it falls down, then I can go play. But next to the house, I'll leave that to the pros. So that's been stressing me. And I'll show you guys later. We'll do a little tour to France and I'll show you the hood and what I'm doing. <clears throat> and why these three or four trees really got me worried. So anyway, I got that handled yesterday. And I called an attorney, a real estate, a, a real estate attorney. Excuse me. Spoke to the secretary lady, explained what was going on. And I said, I need, you know, initially this is a real estate problem, but it grows past that. And long story short, when I spoke to her, she said, we can probably help you with the real estate stuff. I'll have the boss give you a call, but that other stuff, you're going to need a criminal defense attorney. And I said, yeah, well, I might even need a civil rights attorney. And but but because it's all tied together, I can't I'm not I can't separate it, but I might need more than one lawyer. I said, so what I told the gal was what I would like to do is talk to your boss. Break it down for him. And if he wants to handle just the real estate portion and he can advise me and what kind of lawyer and maybe some referrals to help because the two are going to be interlinked. I understand they're very separate issues. The lawsuit for the real estate is one real clean cut issue, cut and dry issue as far as I'm concerned. And when I talk to a lawyer, I'm sure he's going to see it the same way. So whether it's my real estate agent that gets sued or it's their real estate agent that gets sued, that doesn't matter to me. Because there's going to be a pain and suffering portion to all of this. Right? And then on the legal side, civil rights and whatnot with the sheriff and my money and the investigation and, and his own court docs, the conversations that were going on on the telephone while I was doing my live the day they took me to jail. They hung themselves with their own docs on more than one occasion. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm waiting on a phone call from that lawyer and um, it'll snowball real quick because once I hire the attorneys, I'm done. I'll answer whatever questions they need. I'll give them whatever proof they need and then they just go do their job, right? They earn their paycheck. I'm done. <laughs> I've had guys work for me before, right? Ain't no different. Fix my toilet, fix my legal shit, right? I'm paying you to do a service. Unless it's, hey, dude, there's big money here. I just want half. <laughs> cool, right? Fuck a 33%. If an attorney wants to take it on contingency, I'll give him 50%. I'm not about the money. I don't care about the money.
So the ball's rolling, neighbors, and it's going to pick up speed real quick. So I suggest you do something and make it all go away. What that something is, put it on your conscience. What should you be doing right now? I haven't hired an attorney yet, but what should you be doing right now, neighbor? Sheriff? Because once the attorney's hired, it's over. I will advise them to go after everyone and everything. <sighs> I'm just saying. Tick-tock. Arrogance. You know, uh, speaking of arrogance, this happens to be sitting here. Right? I showed you fools this. You want a good dust mask, you get one of these, you put your <whistles> bandana in there. Right? You go to town. But I wore this once. <clears throat> I wore this once at Costco when the booger first hit because I was worried about my bad lungs because I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Hollered at some fucking guy in Costco. You know, my angry, broken self, right? I'm worried about my lungs and this motherfucker's breathing his boogers everywhere. Because that's all that does. That keeps your spit to yourself. That keeps your germs in your fucking mouth. It doesn't keep them going through that mask because they're too small, right? Common sense, motherfucker. But if you're not spitting them all out in the air, they're staying closer to you, less chance of me getting it. Dysregulation. <laughs> I do. I get angry about that because of my bad lungs. My right lung has collapsed twice. Blisters, right? Anyway, the point I'm trying to get at with when it comes to this, I never took, right? Never did that. And I think I got it just recently. You know why? Because my neighbor had it and he come over on Christmas and I was a little sick for a minute and I still ain't been feeling right. And guess what? Everything tastes fucked up. Everything tastes fucked up. Nothing tastes the same right now. Butter, coffee, cigarettes. Everything tastes really fucking weird right now. So I started looking into it. It's one of those booger things. So Johnny caught the booger. I think I finally caught the booger after two years or three years of the bullshit, right? My brother died right at the beginning of the booger. And he was hooked up to one of those machines, man. Ventilator. And I asked Kaiser, did he have the booger? We can't tell you that. This was before the booger was official, homie. So if my brother had the booger, if... I don't even want to start talking about that. He'd be dysregulated with a bunch of fucking tears, homie. The shit I've seen in the last couple years. Shit I've seen in my lifetime, man. It ain't no fucking joke. It ain't no fairy tale. It ain't no Wes Watson bullshit story. That's for goddamn sure. Excuse me, Lord. Anyway, yeah, ball's rolling. Clock is ticking. Johnny's putting in work. I'm gonna order some wood, have him deliver. I went by, fuck man, oh, I hate this place, Walmart. Went to Walmart yesterday. Fucking people. I'm waiting. I'm, I, I hate being in them places anyway, right? Surrounded by a bunch of fucking, I just, people don't know how to behave. And this is, this is what happened yesterday on several occasions. Several being four, five, six times. I'm my cart. I'm trying to get my shit. 
I wanted some butter. This dude and his wife are stuck talking right in front of the butter. And he's holding the fucking one kind of butter and the other kind of butter. And he's like, I don't know. And she's all, well, which one? And three fucking minutes I stood there staring at him. I didn't throw no stink eye. The lady looked at me and said, well, are you, uh, looked at me and I looked at her and she looked at him and said, well, are you going to make a decision? And he's kind of like, well, yeah, I don't know. And they just kept on and on and on and on and on. I just stood there, stood there for three fucking minutes, man. It was only three minutes out of my life, but the old Johnny O, that would have been something to put me on dysregulation. The old me, you know what I would have done? I would have said, excuse me. Can I get to the butter, please? Right? I'd have been in their grill. Confrontational. Would have been well within my rights, but I want my fucking butter. Get the fuck out of the way. I wouldn't have said that. I would have, but I just stood there and waited. Right? And I did it all over the store. I didn't say anything to anyone. Not once. The old me would have been saying some shit. Manners. Right? I, I got this thing about learning some motherfuckers some manners, man. And it ain't my job. And that's what I'm learning about my manners, right? It ain't my job to learn someone else some manners. That's why I don't like going to Walmart or Costco or any of them big fucking stores, man. People don't know how to behave, <laughs> including me, right? So that's the last place I should be <laughs> with my dysregulation. <laughs> I know I've been really using that word a lot lately because it checks me. It explains to me exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and when I'm doing it, when I'm doing it, right? It, the whole thing's in that word. So it, it helps me to not holler at the people at Walmart. It helps me not to holler at the dogs because I hear that word and I'm not going to let that word win, right? I'm not going to let, it's an internal struggle and I'm not going to lose because when I lose, I lose twice, right? I lose my cool and in doing so, it causes havoc and then I get in trouble, right? Whether it's my dogs, the neighbors, whatever. So... <laughs> I've been making a lot of progress in a short period of time. And sometimes it happens like that. Sometimes you go a long time and you don't make any progress and you're just fucking stuck on stupid, right? That's when you need that breakthrough. And I'd been stuck on stupid for a while, very angry and feeling very justified in my anger. But the problem is, uh, I need to keep that to myself. Thanks, James. You know, me coming on here and documenting and venting and journaling and shrinking myself on the gadget as beneficial as that's been, it's costly. You expose yourself to the world, to trolls, to cops, robbers, oh my, right? Motherfuckers see all my shit, right? It's a spooky world. Most people cover their face. They cover their license plate. They don't show shit on the gadget. Like I've said many times, Johnny's full disclosure. What have I got to hide? I'm trying to start a charity. How are you gonna be hidden if you're gonna have a charity at your house, homie, right? So you know my address, you see my vehicles. I ain't afraid. I ain't afraid of the world. I'm angry at the world, right? Fear, anger, sadness, all negative emotions, right? I listen to fools talking about trying to keep a positive mental attitude, right? Thinking good thoughts, you manifest good shit, you get hung up on all the negative shit, you bring more negative shit. Well, what happens when the negative shit just comes and you're working on the house and you're doing this and you're doing that, but the negative shit just comes. You're not 
trying to make it happen. I didn't ask for the situation. I made it worse for sure. I should have been more sneaky and I should have been more like these people and sued the fuck out of them on the down low is what I should have done and never hollered at nobody. But I tried to go down that road, got discouraged and gave up and I shouldn't have gave, gave up. I should have finished this job over a year ago with these people. And I learned the hard way about procrastination. And that's what I've been doing. And that's always been my problem. I'm, I'm a big time procrastinator. I put shit off because I don't like dealing with it. I just want to go work. I just want to go play. I don't want to deal with drama. And that's why I say, when I'm forced to deal with foster parent shit or neighbor shit, that's not me manifesting bad stuff. And me coming on here and talking about it, I don't know if that helps keep it alive or it helps keep me alive to vent and let the shit go. I don't know. It's forever a learning process. And you can't believe everything you hear and you can't believe everyone you see. Not everybody's got their your best intentions in heart. A lot of people will give you bullshit stories and advice because it suits them or it suits the product they're selling. Whether it's a coaching fucking product or it's a psych med or it's a fuck of whatever. Or it's something to take so that you don't catch the bugger. <laughs> man, you got to be real careful who you listen to, man. You need to be... What's that word? Discerning. Very discerning. Especially now. You know, there's a lot. You know, when I was talking about the farmers and the food... It runs a lot deeper than that. Politics, man. If you go back to the 70s, <laughs> ladies, sorry, you ain't gonna like this. But the woman's right movement, right? I am woman, hear me roar. I'm gonna put on pants. I'm gonna go to work nine to five. Woo wee woo. I can get a job. It's the worst thing that happened to this country, man. Mom, you had the best job and the hardest job in the world, and that was raising your children. You should have never went to work. Unless you were the worker and dad got to stay home. But children should be raised by their parents. Not by a babysitter. Not by after school care. Not by uh, not by your, the school either. If I had it my way, I'd learn my own kids. I wouldn't let them get raised by the fucking school system. The shit they're pushing in schools these days. They don't say pledge allegiance to the flag no more. How come? You got no loyalty to your country no more. Where's your patriotism? Mom should be at home. I'm not saying you need to be your old man's slave. Dad gets home from work. He treats mom like a queen and then it's his time with the kids, right? Because mom's doing the laundry. She's cleaning the pad because dad's at work all day, right? Mom's got two jobs staying home. That's when it started. And it's look where we're at now. Poor kids putting others, putting the word other on their clothing, don't identify with male or female. I, I just, I bet those people weren't raised by their mother. I bet they were raised by another, right? I mean, come on, tell me I'm wrong. And I'm not picking, I, this is just how I feel. My mom lost her mom, right? Her mom divorced her dad when she was 10, 11 years old, right? Mom told me the story when she had to go to grandpa and ask him for money for a tampon and she's too embarrassed. So she folded toilet paper. Excuse me, not a tampon, a Kotex. No, tampon, yeah. No, Kotex, right? The, you know what I'm saying, back in the day. Sorry, I just, 
I remember this shit being a little kid. Mom telling me these stories. How hard it was for her to be the mom of her brother and sister and do the chores, right? She had to be the wife when she was a kid. Anyway, it just trips me out that I'm sitting here thinking about this lawsuit shit. And you watch, man. <laughs> watch there be some giant payday and all this bullshit down the road that I don't see that's legit, right? And I get fucking paid large because of what happened to me. I would be shocked, <laughs> right? I'd be giving some money away immediately. Money makes me uncomfortable. I just need what I need and that's all. And anything left over gets given away immediately. And homie, you and I are gonna talk about those dogs that they get cut loose, right? And Cali, you go scoop some doggies, man. I'll take them. You better believe it in a heartbeat. Especially for people from the city turning them loose in the country. Don't let me catch you. I'll turn you loose. <clears throat> That's where I'd get myself in trouble. If I saw somebody being physically cruel to an animal in my presence, I don't know if I could keep my cool. I'd probably get in trouble. Right? Protecting women... I've done that in concerts and gotten in trouble and bullshit, right? Sticking your nose somewhere else. But I can't see somebody get hurt in front of me, man. I can't. And stand there and do nothing? I'm not that guy, right? I can't be an innocent bystander and just stand there. Anybody that knows me knows I'm not that guy. And that's always something that worries me, that I'll be at the wrong place at the wrong time to help, and I'm fucked. It's the world we live in. Man. So anyway, trying to stay positive, right? Think happy thoughts. It's a cruel world we live in, and it gets worse every day. And I'm just going to keep grinding. I like grinding. I like what I'm doing. That motorcycle is going to be on a motorcycle lift. Oh, you know what I, else I did yesterday? <laughs> I registered five vehicles. I registered one. The blue one, not yet. <laughs> the blue Harley is still a ghost. So I registered one, two. Three which is on the trickle charger, four, five. I registered all five of those vehicles in Wisconsin yesterday. You know how much that cost me? 400 bucks. You know what that would have cost me in Cali to register those four vehicles? <laughs> it probably would have cost me 400 bucks just to register the monster truck, right? One ton. <laughs> So when it comes to having what I need to get the job done, whether it's vehicles, toys, tools, whatever, and having a legacy to leave to somebody, <laughs> it's a pretty good one. Just saying. So when it comes to dangling a carrot, I think I've done a pretty good fucking job, don't you? Considering I can barely fucking read, come up in foster homes, and yet still. <whistles> can't deny me. Just saying. All right, y'all. Time to go. Have a beautiful day. Me and the girls will. Got work to do. Hopefully the phone's ringing. <laughs> Making moves. All right, y'all. Much love and respect as always. I'll see you in the front of papers. Peace.